Today is story time because today I did something pretty cool and today I filmed that something that was pretty cool a little bit so that I could show you guys. So welcome to story time. I kind of put this thing together. I wanted to take my uncle shooting. We hadn't ever gone before. Super fun time, but I didn't exactly know what I was getting into. See, I was expecting to point out the place that we were going, you know, kind of give directions, show a couple different good spots to do it in the forest, and kind of be the expert there, you know? But that's not really what ended up happening because as it turns out, my uncle and his friend have another hobby that they do up in that same area that I'm, I have never done it before. This is the hobby. I don't know exactly what you call it. It's like, mud jumping or off-roading, jeeping. I don't really know, but I wasn't expecting it and I didn't know it was coming. See, apparently my uncle goes up into these mountains and he went up into these mountains all through high school when he was younger uh, with his good friend Rob. I think he met Rob during college, but you get the point. He'd go up with friends into these mountains that I thought I knew well, and he knows them way better than I do. But not only that, he goes up so frequently, he has like a $400 walkie talk. This thing is absolutely insane. So if another person has one of these, you can actually check their location on a map and then you can install an app that will tell you who owns the property that you are standing on currently. So the whole time, he's driving in his Jeep, his friend's driving in his truck, and they're communicating via these high-tech walkie talkies. And of course, we're going up into the mountain and we hit some snow and my uncle starts spinning out like crazy. Bear in mind, on this side there's a cliff, and on this side there's a ditch with a bunch of trees. And he'll come up real close to the cliff and then just spin out fishtail back over towards the ditch where the trees are, and then straight now. I wasn't expecting it. No, I did not pee my pants, but what I did do is hold on for the ride. See, even though I wasn't expecting this, I knew that it was gonna be okay, and I knew that if it wasn't gonna be okay, it wasn't gonna be okay. I knew that whatever happened was gonna happen. And my uncle kept asking me, he said, all right, do you know where we are now? Do, do you know where we are now? Because he was way up higher in the mountains than I'd ever been. I kept saying, no, no, no. But finally, we made it down into the area that I knew. And so I started pointing out, that's a good place to shoot. That's a good place to shoot. You can shoot down there, over there. You can go ahead and shoot. I pointed all this out and it kind of, everything was back to normal, back to how I had expected it to be. And this is the reason that I'm telling you guys this story. In music, I believe that it's important to have clear and flexible expectations. While I was expecting to just go shooting, when we didn't, it was okay. I just went with it. And so in music production, oftentimes, I will have a very clear vision for what I want my song to sound like. But the bottom line is that you cannot I repeat this, you absolutely cannot record 16 tracks at once and make what you want all at the same time. Music production comes in layers, just like life does. And while you might have a very clear expectation for what you hope your song sounds like in the end, you gotta just hold on for the ride. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys some examples. One example that comes to mind is when I set out to make a song like Dead Mouth. Not Dead Mouth 5, gosh dang. When I set out to make a song like Dead Mouse, I had never really made a song like that. And it was weird, and I didn't know what was going on. Now I had my chord section, and that was fine. I would made my chord section, and I expected that I was going to be making that. But then I realized this song can't simply be these complicated chords because people need something to hold on to more. So I had to write like a verse that was a little bit more simplistic. And so I started by finding like a lick for that part. This is when I used, what's it called again? This is when I used a great contact library called Exhale. And I found this great little like dirty sounding, weird sounding singing. I'll go ahead and solo that track so you can hear it. And so then I added in some chords, some mellow chords, simple chords, and I recorded bass because bass is really simple, especially when it's not really fronted. So this is everything with the piano and bass and that little melody. 
but it just wasn't sounding right. Again, I had a very clear expectation for what I was going to be doing, but I just, I sat in that unknown. I settled into that mystery and I pursued it for like 30 minutes. I just, I listened and I reimagined. I changed my expectation because it was flexible. And while I can admire rigidity, I think that in music, rigidity breaks really quickly. I'll have a very clear expectation when sitting down with an acoustic guitar in my voice on what I want to write about, you know, the topics, maybe even the key, the style of music, and then something completely different will just like ooze out of my body. And if I don't seize the moment and change my expectations and grab onto that music, I miss an opportunity. And so I learned something that I think it's really important. Maybe you've already learned it. Maybe you haven't observed it yet but that's that you need to have flexible expectations when it comes to music production at least. I'm all for rigidity in a lot of other places. I think it's important to stick to your beliefs. I also think it's important to very clearly know why you believe what you believe. And I think it's important to stick to the fact that maybe you don't know what you believe about something. I think it's okay to say, I have a firm opinion, but I don't really know why. And that's all rigidity. But flexibility is something that is essential in music production. Now I just wanna go ahead and finish out the story we got to the shooting range. We got to the place where we shoot. And I ended up having some say in it. We were like, that one's really good. Let's go there. And so we went there and we shot and it was, it was amazing. My uncle's friend, Rob, brought out uh, these shotguns and we shot some clays, which is something that I had never done before. I'll go ahead and insert some footage. Cool. Oh yeah? Oh yeah? And then again, you know, plans change. You have to be flexible because my uncle, after we were done, took his Jeep and rode it up the side of a massive gravel pile. It must have been like, like 45 degrees. Insane, absolute insanity. And what I will tell you, and this is the end of the video, I had so much fun doing something that I didn't expect to have fun doing and I wasn't even expecting to do in the first place, that I ended up wanting to come back for more and get closer to the action. All right, let's do it one more time. Let me get in there. Ah. By the way, if you've never played Bananagrams or shot with a 25 millimeter lens or used the, the kit lens or used a neutral density filter, I'd highly recommend using those things. Four things I love, four things that are excellent creations in the society that we live in called America.